Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing the next part of our Selena the Series chit chat, our overview of these episodes and there will be some spoilers so if you don't and haven't watched it, do not watch any more of this video because I'm going to be breaking it down in this episode of Selena the Series Breakdown, okay? So this is for episodes three and episodes four and we're just going to be jumping in where we left off in my last one if you have not seen that make sure you guys go check that out and yeah without further ado let's just hop in to selena the series episodes three and four of part one so this is a super exciting time for selena and the quitania family in general okay this is something huge for them and I just feel like this was a monumental moment of everything just changing over. This is like super important. This is like 1989 and she's like 18 years old, 17, 18 years old. And this is just the start of something super exciting and somewhat will be spoiler. But if you're a real Selena fan or like super into it and know a lot about her, you know, this is just the first of many awards that she will win. So spoiler, she will win the TMA award. Okay. And this is her first time being nominated for it. It starts off where they are inside their home and they are turning on the TV. I guess this is how you figure out you're going to be nominated. And like, this is like totally different from what we do now. I'm sure I've never been nominated for like a TMA or anything like that. But I'm just saying this. I'm assuming this is just how it goes. Okay. So she's been nominated. They're sitting at home watching TV and they're, this is how they like go off and say, hey, this who's nominated. Patsy Torres, Selena Quintanilla. Okay, so for Entertainer of the Year, Female Entertainer of the Year, which is super exciting. This is a very high point in Selena's life, and I'm not saying not anybody else's for her career, like career-wise. This is a super high monumental point for her in her singing career, okay? The trickle effect where she just is on the rise, okay? Now, I'm not saying she wasn't on the rise before because obviously she came from nothing and got to a TMA award. But what I'm saying is career-wise, this is where the ball starts rolling, where the snowball keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This is it. This is the moment, okay? She realizes there, everybody's sitting down, they're all together, she is nominated. That is huge. So, then that makes Suzette really question her herself as a drummer, as an as an instrument player, as part of a band. Okay, she doesn't feel like she is good enough. Or you know, it, since the beginning, we've noticed that she has always questioned herself as a drummer. Never really wanted to be a drummer. Do I think she became a drummer? Hell yes, I do. And in an interview with Chris, he said she's a badass drummer. In an interview that he did, okay, um, but. Yeah, so she just starts questioning herself and like, you know, and Selena's like, no, like if there's no, you know, Ringo without the Beatles and there is no Selena without Suzette, which you guys have seen probably in the, um, in the preview and the trailer for it. So you guys probably saw that part. So, but that's what she's talking about is questioning, you know, herself in the band in general and her contribution to the band where she doesn't feel like it's, she con contributes as much as she could or she's not as good as everybody else at what they do. This is also the first time that Selena is in this big press moment when everybody's walking down the red carpet. This is her first big red carpet event that she's like, oh my goodness, what do I do? Do I, what do I do? Do I talk? Do I, s I don't know. She didn't know. So she asked Suzette and she asked Suzette, what do I do? She goes, smile, duh. And then, so I just feel like that was like a super Selena and Suzette moment. And I just feel like that was something that was like really said or very similar to what was really said in real life. I don't know why I just have that feeling. Um, also at the TMA awards, she um, talks to Laura Canales, which is a huge Tejano star. And being a woman, that is huge. She was the first and she just goes in the bathroom and talks to Laura Canales, and as a woman, that is very, very rare. That's why they call her La Reina de la Tex-Mex, or La Reina de Tejano, or whatever, Selena, because she is. She was the one, the first woman that was actually, blew the doors open, and they were like, oh, shit, this is Selena. Like, this girl is taking over the Tejano market. You know what I mean? The Tex-Mex market, she's taking over. 
and she's being accepted even as a woman. She talks a lot of Canales and that was like a very big heart to heart moment. She thanks her for what she's done and contributed to the Tejano music, okay? And then she asks her like, do you have advice? Is, can I ask you advice? Like, can I, is that like what I'm allowed to do? Can we talk about it? Like, can we, can we, can we discuss? you know, what advice you give. So she gives her, just be yourself. People will tell you who you need to be, but just be who you are. And I think that was really another monumental point in Selena's career, in my opinion. I don't know if this was a real conversation. I'm sure something similar. Um, no one will know, but Selena and Laura Canales, and they're both past, obviously. Um, but so it's not like we can go back and fact check. No, so that was really important. So, after she wins, she, she gives the same speech as she does in real life. So, if you go back and you go on YouTube, you can just, you can just put in like 1989 TMA Awards, I think it is. And she wins. And it's the same one. It's the one where she wants to thank Grupo Los Dinos. And when she wins, or when they win, she wins. And when they lose, she doesn't know them. Okay. So that was a really great um, thing. It wasn't made up. It was actually verbatim what was said by Selena on her first win. Okay. So that's super exciting. So after all this transpires now, even though, you know, she wins, Abraham was like, awards do not matter. It doesn't matter. You can have 100 awards. It just doesn't mean you're great. Okay. But I love Marcella because she just gives it to him. Like this really... I said in my last video about Marcella, the last episodes about Marcella, she, I love this show, seeing this part of her. And if this is how she really was, which I kind of have a feeling that it really kind of was, because who's that produced this? So I feel like this is how her mom was, so level-headed, and but she'll give it to him. Like, she was like, well, I thought awards don't matter, remember? Remember, awards don't matter. And then... He didn't say anything, but he knows. Marcelo listens to his ass. And when he's wrong, he's going to know. Okay? Marcelo will give it to him. If anybody's going to tell him something, it's going to be her. It's going to be her. So, I love that part. Then, right away after she was nominated, um, we're going to kind of go backtrack just because I have my notes written down and they're kind of out of order. So, bear with me, okay? My next round of notes will not be so scattered. Um, he does call Johnny Canales, um, after she's nominated and says, Hey, Johnny, what's up? Like, I'm ready. We're ready. Can we do a performance? He's nominated for a Tejano award. And I think it was multiple this year. I don't quote me, but I think it was. I think that's what they said. Um, and he's like, you ready? Let's do this. You know, he's like, perfect. Come to Matamoros. We are going to have like thousands of people. So this is just like the nomination like performance that he was like going off saying she's nominated, she's nominated. I'm like, really she's gonna be a winner obviously they go to idaho who would have thought she would have gone to idaho i never even heard of selena performing in idaho so that was something that was different for me because i didn't hear i've never i didn't know i mean i'm not saying she couldn't go to like montana or something i'm just saying it just was something that i've never seen a, a video from it i've never seen any of that so, um, as you guys know from the last episode, Abraham pulled her out of school and now she's doing like, I think it's correspondence school, if it, that's what it's called. So they get Big Bertha, which is a huge, again, another monumental point. So episodes three and episodes four are very, um, big parts in their career, um, and in their personal lives as well. So remember they were had, they were in the van all the time and they had that little, um, little trailer behind them. Big Bertha's huge. Obviously Big Bertha is still at the Selena Museum at like today at this point. So crazy to think about that you are not allowed in big bertha but yes big bertha is still was still is still around actually so they buy that huge purchase huge big thing for the band so they can you know transport everything that they need she performs in matamoros and this is with the johnny canales show and you can watch this whole performance she did very similar performance as selena's performance she did do jody watley like she was promised and um the outfit was very similar i mean damn near identical this is before they got big bertha though so as you as you know that people were like jumping on the hitch and in order for the hitch to keep everything attached it would can't be obviously bent broken whatever 
and yeah so it ended up breaking the hitch to the trailer and the trailer as you guys see going past them which is a hilarious part i love that part and yeah so that's what happened and why i think that he was like we can't do this anymore like we need something better remember how suzette was questioning about being a drummer as she was struggling with it and questioning if she really wanted to be in the band so at the end of this performance it was so nice the girl was like no i want your autograph you know i look up to you and and throughout the scene you're and when, when matamoros comes up on the screen you're questioning like oh she loves selena she wants to you know she's admiring selena she's admiring the band but really she's admiring suzette as being a girl drummer so this just confirms that she should stay in the band and just you know ride it out with selena for her career and it was a really monumental moment in her life and in her career because she could have just gone and you know do what she was doing kind of just like administration stuff or things like that with her work with her dad and whatever he needed her to do but it just confirmed that she should be part of um the band so that's exciting okay that was a really awesome moment to see it was a win. It was it was definitely like an accomplishment, a win. Honestly, that part, I loved that part so much. I actually think I cried. Um, and honestly, I just, I really loved that part where it was like a confirmation, like you, you belong here. This is where you belong, you know? So I was very happy about that. You'll see Selena also trying to learn Spanish. And this is a, a way of how a lot of people, like this is how a lot of people learn. And it is with um, just watching the television, watching, you know, telenovelas and stuff like that. So that's what she was trying to do. And she was trying to learn uh, Spanish before she went to Johnny Canales. She really, she didn't speak Spanish. So other than gracias. Okay. In episode four, she does a meet and greet because her voice um, and they keep saying ronca and ronca means like horse voice. Like it's very horse. Like you're very horse where you're like, you're, you're on the brink of losing it. You know, when it's like very hard for you and raspy. So then she has to do a meet and greet, something that can like promote them. Cause they had something with, um, an issue with someone who owned, um, the ballroom and also owned the radio station. So they were promoting with Selena doing a meet and greet and you see them going shopping, which is super fun. And then also what is super important in this episode, this is, this is it, Peter Studio. That's all I have to say, okay? Just kidding, that's not all I have to say. But he's with Los Bad Boys and he always opens up for Selena y Los Dinos. So this is where it begins, where he becomes part of their life. Not joining the band yet, but they this becomes a part of where Peter Studio meets the band, starts opening for the band, and then eventually, as you guys know, Peter Studio and Ricky they become part of the band, but we're not there yet. And also, in AB's life, I know we haven't really talked about AB that much, as much as I'd like, but as we go along more, yes, we will, because I feel like AB is super important and they really do focus on AB a lot, and it's very important why they do, okay? Very important. Um, but he first sees Vanjie and Vanjie is going to be his first wife, his first wife, many wives that he has in his lifetime. Um, but this is his first wife where he has his two kids with. So, and we'll see how he reacts, um, and see if anything changes as we go along with the relationship. And then finally, one of the biggest moments that is, was a very cool thing that I feel was very, very cool um was abraham and i feel like this is a full circle moment for him and for his and for marcella okay i think he loves her so much i truly think i know they love each other so much well, at least in the series what they show i feel like they if this is how they were in real life he loves her she loves him they're very yin and yang and i very balanced um there's an equilibrium there because of how they are and this part I was so happy and it was full circle and he was they were gonna have to leave their home um not because they lost it but just because um it was the time and then the the renters sold the land to someone else I believe or something people someone bought the land or whatever the case is um and so he decided to purchase the home 
And remember the last time they had the, they purchased a home, they lost the home and they were renting this home or they were in Corpus. Your uncle Hector, they moved to, they just decided to stay in Corpus. He decided, I think, I don't know which house. I don't think they ever moved, but 705 Bloomington was Selena's home. And I think 70, he purchased, so he ended up purchasing three homes and she was shocked and she was like, what, how, why, like, what the heck? Um, and it was because something about a consolidated loan. Home loan is easier than, it's cheaper than paying rent on a home. So that's why he decided to purchase the three homes for the consolidated loan. So I know the addresses are 705, 707, 709. Uh, they're all on Bloomington and they're just all next to each other, which was honestly, in my opinion, that point was a very monumental point for the, his family. I just feel like them all living in the same, on the same block, all the house next to each other, it makes so much sense. And when I first heard it, when I was younger, when I first started following Selena, I was like, that is so cool. Like who thought of that? And now you know why. Now you understand why the three houses were bought together and why they're all next to each other. And it's cool because as they get older, they all got their own house. Maybe um, uh, Suzette, I don't believe, did. I believe she moved somewhere else with Bill Arriaga, which we'll get into him later. Um, them, their relationship later, that's later in the series. Um, but I think it's very, very cool. So I don't know what they were doing at this point. I know I think AB automatically got a home. And then Selena and Suzette were, I believe, were just still in that home and one home was empty. That's what I would be thinking. I'm not, because I feel like Selena was always with them or how they showed it, but I don't know. So that's where I don't know. So that's pretty much it for episodes uh, three and four of part one. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts, comments, um, anything down below that we, honestly, this is where it gets good. It gets real juicy. Okay. And I can't wait to keep going. And um, five and six are up next. And then we we'll have a few more. And then hopefully part two will come out eventually. Hopefully sometime, you know, I th I'm thinking March. So I'm saying it here first. But I think there's another eight or nine episodes. I heard. I don't know, guys. I don't know. That's I don't know. But I'm super excited for the next few episodes and talk to you guys about it with Pete and those bad boys and just new things for selena y los dinos in general i'm super excited about it and i can't wait to let you guys know more of my thoughts but we'll end it for here for right now so thank you guys so much for watching do not forget to subscribe down below before you go I'm very excited to be filming this because you guys know i love selena and i hope you guys are gonna love this too and uh, we can just form our own little Selena family here. <laughs> okay. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. It has been such a pleasure doing this. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. Not just a Selena video, but I also do makeup videos and other vlogs. So uh, thank you guys so much again. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. And uh, this makeup look will be up if not right before this, after it, okay? I love you guys so much. Stay happy, stay healthy, and uh, use hand sanitizer, wash your hands, just be super healthy and stay safe, okay guys? Love you all so much, and have a wonderful day, night, afternoon, evening. I love you all so much, okay? All right guys, bye.